Uh, 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 yeah. Good morning, everyone. Today, uh, along with the last week, I'm talking about the uh, external force system. So last week, we are talking about the uh, stretching system. This week, we are talking about the compression system. So let's start. So first, I want to introduce this system, which already established in ITREN. Yeah. So gas compression system, AGP 3001 and S. So they can induce up to 250 millimilli Hg, which means around 33 kilopascal. So let's see our video. How does it work? Hi, my name is Derek from Strex. Today I'm going to show you how to apply static or cyclic pressure to cultured cells using the Strex pressure system called AGP-1000. This allows researchers to mimic hydraulic pressure in vitro, which gives a better representation of physiological conditions on the bench top. Since cells are constantly exposed to dynamic forces in their natural environment, like shear stress, mechanical strain, and hydrostatic pressure, it's important for researchers to understand how cells respond to these stimuli and differentiate between them. This can have applications in endothelial cells, smooth muscle cells, epithelial cells in the bladder, kidneys, intestines, and a variety of other cell types. Whatever your application, we are here to assist you in order for your research to be successful. The AGP-1000 system can be run in either continuous or cyclic mode. System includes pressure chamber, control box, regulator, and of course, uh, vacuum tubes that are required. The pressure chamber is designed to be placed inside an incubator. The program is fully automated for gas exchange at given intervals to ensure cell viability. Pressure range can range from zero to 250 millimeters mercury for a standard model, but we can accommodate custom systems for higher pressures. Each standard chamber can fit up to six plates, but we can also expand the system to have up to two chambers simultaneously for higher throughput. Contact us today to find out how our system can help you with your research. Okay, so basically you can position your six well or like this 35 millimeter dish like this and then sorry from the gas chamber system which means they inject the gas to induce a pressure and while you are culturing. So the benefit of this machine is you don't need to use special plate or special things. Just you can use your normal plate, normal culture dish, and then at the same time, you can induce the compression. This is the beauty of this machine. So how does it work? So the spec is, yeah, as I told you, up to 200 millimeter mercury and 7.6 millimeter incremental setting. And then you can also induce some waveform or static form Either way, you can play with it. So how this machine, how does this machine use it for? So this is one example published in Science Advance. So they induce compressure three hour using maximum 33.3 kilopascal, which means 250 millimeter mercury, and then continuous culture for a few days. So compression, 30 hour, 30 hour per day and few days. And then they culture this embryo or organoid in the system. So non-treatment means that ECM are there. And then when CTK treated, CTK means some enzyme to degrade the ECM. C is collagenized trypsin and knockout serum replacement. So they, when they degrade it, their target FOX3 transcription factor 
going out to the cytoplasm. But when they induce pressure from using this machine, the FOX3 is again going to the nucleus without the ECM. Okay? So they proved their concept, the role of the ECM to confine the FOX3 transcription factor inside the nucleus is due to the compression force to the cell. So they proved this concept using this compression machine. So if we want to use this kind of concept, the ECM or your material, they can induce some, from external compression force, they can induce certain cell behavior, and then you can use the system instead of your ECM. So in the supplementary data, yeah, they suggest like this. So how does it work? So this uh, gas injector position outside of the chamber, and you can put this compression chamber inside of the CO2 incubator like this. So this is a compression machine, pressure chamber, but outside the compression controller position outside here. So you can play with this one. At the same time, your, your chamber is positioned inside. Next, another example is here, they induce three hours of compression, and then they set 6.7 kilopascal. So here, they, without compression, with compression, under PMA or certain activator of, of immune cell, without compression, with compression, as you can see, they can see some increase of their marker Without activating immune cell, nothing happened. But after activation, they can detect the uh, MFAT1 here. But while they are inducing the compression force, they are more enhanced. OK? These two types of cells, also they prove their concept. So like this, as you know, this immune cell, when they infiltrate certain tissue, they feel the compression force because they have to struggling to pass through certain tissue to reach the injury site or inflammatory site, right? Immune cells always starting from the, not always, immune cells mostly, they move from the blood vessel to the target tissue. While they're playing the journey, they have to feel the compression force from the surrounding tissue. So this is the reason why they use this compression force to mimic the biomimetic system, your body, okay? So you, you have to remember, the so immune cell, also you can think about to use this kind of compression as a, another external force and more relevant to the clinical settings. Here, in supplementary data, also they mention like this, controller outside, inside of chamber and then gas in while you are injecting the gas you can induce some um, compression in the gas out so you can hide uh, as a waveform or dynamic way you can induce the compression so here uh, here, uh, here here you can see certain marker while they are inducing the activating using PMA and I when they induce compression, they are decreasing, okay? So they prove their concept. Anyhow, the cell behave change under compression force. But the a merit of this system is there is no live system because as you can imagine from this machine, it's not, it's not easy to install this machine on the top of the Julie stage or live system. So at the same time, you cannot track the cell while you are inducing compression force. Right after, so right after compression force, you have to fix directly as soon as, 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 soon as possible, and then you can visualize them to see what kind of component, uh, components are changed, okay? This is also a merit of this system is there's no live system, and then as you can imagine, 
while you are turning off the machine, somehow some little component can be changed. Under compression, they are like deformed, but while you are turning off, before the fixation cell, some, some, somehow they are relieved a little bit. So the gene reporting expression, uh, not exactly equal to the under compression system, but anyhow, they got the result like this, which means you can fully utilize the system to mimic the compression force in, a, in, the, in, in your body, okay? So this is some second system. Second system is more dynamically, you can see, you can visualize the cell. So this is some cell confinement system. There are three, one well dynamic, one well static, six well static. So I'll introduce one well dynamic confiner, which is most, mostly used by the research scientist. You can put this, this system on the slide glass, and then while you are inducing compression force, you can visualize cell at the same time. So in contrast to the previous machine, this machine, you can lively visualize the cell while you are inducing compression force. And then this is more physical, con physical contact way. Because previous machine, we are using gas, air, to induce compression force. But this machine, physically, we can touch the cell from the top and then compress like your finger. Okay. So how you can compress a cell? There is option to confine the height from 1 to 20 micrometer. Most of the cell, the, when their cells are cultured on the dish glass, their, maximum, their height is around 10 micrometer. Not always, but average. So 10 micrometer is used for without compression. But using same setting, they rarely touch the cell. But 5 micrometer, half of the height of cell, 3, one third. So while, when you use this 10, 5, 3, you can see how cell behave under the compression force physically, okay? So in detail of this machine is like this. Mm. There is also vacuum pump, security tank, dynamic confiner, okay? And then here, pillars to the top. And then, while you are still culturing on this slide glass, and then using this pillar, you can position the pillar to the top, and then pillar height is, you can vary from one to 20 micrometer. But in iTrend, we are setting 10, 5, 3 micrometer. So, and then while setting this system, when you start this vacuum pump, they are compressed up to the height of the pillar, okay? So like this, you can easily imagine, depending on this pillar height, you can compress it using this vacuum pump. So dynamically and in live system, you can track the cell while they are, while they are feeling the compression force. And then this compression force is up to three, three kilopascal. But three kilopascal is vacuum pump pressure, not uh, a direct physical compression to the cell. Okay, actually we can add 100%, maybe you can calculate based on this parameter, but anyhow this system, depending on the height, you can compress the cell. So I will introduce next week or this week, the researcher used this machine and then published in very good journal Science and Nature. So I, I want to introduce, maybe many people use this, this compression system as a golden standard to track the cell. And then when I, when I visit this website, this is a 4D cell company. Actually, this is a startup company from the institute in France, okay? So when you visit here, you can see more information of your, your system. 
So one of the video, how to utilize the confinement. Original, while they're com compressing, you can track how cell behave. This is G-Stack. Maybe this 10, 5, 3 micrometer of confinement. Okay. Yeah, here, yeah, more you can see the detail. Compression force by the vacuum chamber, and then depending on the pillar height, cell are confined by z axis. And then you can, physical con by physical contact, you can compress the cell. Okay? While you are compressing, this is on the confocal dish, uh, sorry, confocal machine, so you can track the cell how they behave. So like that, non-confined, five, three micrometer of Hella cell, they are changed. And then depending on the no confinement, low, high compression, you can track the cell, how they behave change. Okay, depending on the adhesion, depending on the confinement, the cell behave like this. Also, depending on the cell type, some cell, and some height, they are, they are inducing this fragilate cell. Sometimes they are positioned to ameboid cell. Even though they are in the same cell line, but depending on the treatment time, they change their behavior or their morphology. And then another, one where static, six where static, as you can know the meaning of from this title, static means just without any vacuum chamber, just physically contact. Like when you position this silicone on the top of the cell, just statically you can, the cell feel. Previous one, using vacuum system, you can determine the frequency like one hertz, one time per second, 0.1 hertz, 10 time, and one time per 10 second. You can determine the frequency, how you compress a cell. But here, there is no frequency, just statically press the cell on the top. And then you can track the cell. And then this is some uh, throughput version. You can use six well plate. So these two settings, we are not e establishing at the moment. But if you need it, yeah, you can we can consider to buy it. OK, up to now, there are two systems. Number one, we already established. So expert is Hanjin and Songil, so you can ask them. Second one is we order, so they are coming around, maybe next month. And then while, OK, and then what, can, what kind of things can be changed under compression? So I summarized all the article, how they are changed. So this is some, some component. By compression, cytosol nuclear area volume change. You can simply imagine. Microfilament, laminacy, DNA damage, epigenetic change, calcium uptake, transcription, transcriptome change. OK, let's see one by one, briefly. So actually, actually this guy, Matthew Peel, yeah, very one of the famous guy to use compression force to track the cell how they behave. So he, I think he made made this system, and then maybe one of the doctors under him. They opened the startup company, and that company name is 4D Cell. So exactly we are using the same system, which is which was established by this Matthew Peel. So from 2012, they first time published this paper. This system, PDMS piston, confine the cell. Okay, and then while while they vary the height, and then they can change the pressure, and maybe using the pressure system, depending on the height, they can change the pressure to the cell. Okay, so you can. They it's already well known, and then. They tracked 
before compression, after compression. H2B is, uh, as you know, the histone protein marker. Mm. So this MIR palm GFP is mm, staying in the membrane. So cell membrane is green, and then you can simply nucleus component protein is H2B red. Before compression, like this. After compression, they are confined. Okay, so cell membrane as well as nucleus highly change. And then when they use this 3.5 micrometer pillar, they are more dynamically compressed. Okay, and then you can see this kind of blap. Blap means this is some marker of the nuclear malformation. Also, you can imagine this, when you see this kind of thing, the cells start to feel the DNA damage, okay? So, this is the first paper to use this machine. Depending on the pillar height, they can change the height of the cell, and then they can determine the compression, how much they apply, and then during this compression system, they can track the cell behave at the same time. So we can say that while compressing, cells are physically compressed. Cell membrane, jet, 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 jet axis compressed, and nucleus also compressed, okay? Now, while they're compressing, okay, let's see. So they're checking laminate. So minus one minute without compression. Five minute after compression. As you can see, this uh, blurry laminate, lamine A level, somehow they are more positioned to the edge, okay? And then they can start to show this blab, like blabbing, okay? After one hour later, lamine more appear like this. And then two or three hours later, they also show like this. And then this is compression. After compression, they release the compression system. And then very compression like this. Oh, sorry, compression one and 90 seconds, they compress. They can start to show this kind of blabbing. While they release, while they release, this blabbing is gone. Okay, also, lamin, also their position to the original position. Okay, so using this machine, compressing how the cell membrane change, they can track compressed, cell membrane also compressed. Release, without compression, they are released. This blurry, they are gone like this. And then also, depending on the compression, laminate, laminate distribution also change from the edge or blabbing structure, they're gone. So we can, now we can know that while cells are feeling the compress, physical compression, cell membrane as well as nuclear membrane, they are changed. Which is simply we can imagine. So while they are changed, also, transcription factor or transcriptome can be changed. Here, nf kappa b pathway activation. So they, they check control 25, 3 micrometer confinement, and check the total RNA level using microarray. And then, as you can see, while they are compressing more, this nf kappa b one pathway-related gene are more unregulated. Okay, so they prove their concept while they're compress compressed, transcription level also change. So somehow this kind of compression is happen all the time in our body. So you, they want to understand how using their system, how cell feel the compression and then this feeling, how they're changed to the transcriptome change. And the next, mm, 
Also, without any machine, there is one way to compress the cell, which is hyperosmotic hyper pressure. Hyperosmotic pressure means that when you add more, let's, for example, when you add more FBS to the media, which is one of the way to induce more hyperosmotic pressure. Okay, so hyperosmotic compression change volume down and spatial distribution of laminacy, especially jet axis. Here, uh, they use PEG, one of the biocompatible biopolymer, and then which is already very well known. When you add certain amount of PEG, they can induce certain amount of kilopascal. This is already uh, well known. You can easily find it. So here they add, they induce 1,600 1, kilopascal to the cell using this, this PEG. So here they track the live laminase level. Okay, so original uh, osmolarity is around three, three, three or four hundred, and then they induce more osmotic pressure. While they are inducing more, more osmotic pressure, you can, when you track the laminase level, they are more shrinked. Okay, and then this original volume compared to original volume. Volume is change, volume is decrease, and then bulk modulus, elasticity of the cell, they are increasing, and then laminacy fluorescence also increase while compressed. Okay, this is also well known. And then uh, they depending on the scale of the osmolarity, they track how they are changed time, osmotic pressure. When they indu induce more osmotic pressure, yeah, they are going down the distribution, going down the volume, okay? Here, yeah, one of the examples. So before PEG, before treatment, they show like this. After PEG, they don't have much time to enlarge their 2D projection area, okay? They just shrink by that axis. This is the reason why the volume is decreasing. Yeah. Okay, so along with the live laminacy, you can track the nucleus morphology. Nucleus, they shrink by that axis majorly. There's no much change of X and Y axis, minor or major axis, but that axis is majorly changed. So this is their uh, their calculating table. PG amount, how much amount of PG you added the media? This is the osmotic pressure you are inducing. So this is very already well known. And then they checked the cell volume as well as uh, cell membrane stiffness. Okay. So if we use same PG molecular weight already iTrain has, and then adding this. PG to the cell, to the media, you can induce osmotic pressure as a one of the way to induce compression. And then this compression mostly happen by jet axis. But if you culture them longer and longer, maybe X and Y axis can be changed. This is only within 30 minutes or within one hour, right? Or always cell uh, dynamically change. So when you track up to five hour or 12 hour, also X and Y axis can be changed. But this the important thing is that this this only early time point up to 30 minutes. And the next and another one is let's check the microfilament. Okay. So microfilament. Microfilament we have intermediate filament and, and uh, actin. Okay? Actin and then intermediate filament and the microtubule. So three is a major component, right? Actin, affectin, microtubule, and intermediate filament, one of them is pimentin. Okay. Before see this one, let's read this sentence. 
a large stress such skeleton polymer network shows strain softening. Although breaking of individual polymer strands can lead to network failure, recent work with actin and interfilament networks show that the stress induced unbinding of cross-linker also lead to network softening. Cross-linker unb unbinding, either due to the external force or due to the kinetics of transient current shrinking, allows actin filament to locally rearrange and leads to the dissipation of energy. Once the local stress is relaxed, the cross-linker can rebind to the filament and network elasticity can recover. Okay, let's start to understand this sentence. This is zero means without compression. Minus extra strain is compress the cell. Okay, let's imagine while you are compress the cell, how these three component, microfilament, microtubule, and intermediate filament, they change. So they individually analyze the affecting microtubule, vimentin, stiffness. Okay? Interestingly, this microfilament affecting a microtubule, they are decreasing their modulus while you are compressed the cell. So the region is behind, on, this is one of the region, breaking of the individual polymer. As you know, affecting a microtubule, they are consist of monomer. And then this monomer is contacting each other and they are, they are making polymer structure, okay? But while they are compressed, this polymer is break down. And then cross linker, which bind the monomer to monomer, they also break down, okay? Because 40% of strain is your half of the height is decreasing. 10 micrometer height to five micrometer height. So which is very dramatic change to the cell. In that case, polymer structure is, they're gone. So because their polymer structure is gone, so their stiff, stiffness decreasing. But interesting point is that intermediate filament vimentin, only they are increasing, okay? So this is some beauty of the vimentin, intermediate filament, and then role of the intermediate filament. So we can call it this decrease of stiffness along with the compression force, strain softening. Extra strain they can use when they are stretched, when they're compressed, in any direction, the some, something height is changed, we can call it strain, okay? But minus means, actually this uh, value is also de de depending on the researcher. So here, the minus means compressed. So this is compression strain, soft softening, compression strain stiffening. So this is called strain softening. This is called strain stiffening, okay? And then why this intermediate filament only strain stiffening? Because intermediate filament, for example, here, uh, here on the exit, a highly charged, charged semi-flexible polysaccharide, okay? So one of the component, major component of intermediate filament is here on the exit. Here on the exit, they highly charged. There are many charged structure and the semi-flexible polysaccharide. So while they're compressed, they are strain stiffening because they have repulsive force. So they are very highly charged, which means plus, minus, plus, minus, they have many things. So while they're compressed, plus, plus, minus, minus, they can make repulsive force. Hanbalya, repulsive force, okay? So they can increase their stiffness. But actin and microtubule, their net charge is zero. Sorry, not zero, zero. So, volume, and then volume conserving. Because the net charge is zero, so there is no repulsive force, and then volume is same. Why volume is the same? Strain softening due to breakdown of the brittle fiber. For example, this is, um, this is volume conserving things from the, this is imagine the actin and microtubule. So net charge is zero, and then they are very brittle structure. They cannot easily change their volume, okay? Their volume should be same. And then, when while they're compressed, they're compressed like this position, 
but because of very brittle, brittle characteristic of the polymer, actin and microtuber, they are breaking down. So they induce strain softening. But this hyaluronic acid, intermediate filament, this kind of component, very highly charged one, and then while they're compressed, they don't need to maintain their volume. Okay? They are very flexible, semi-flexible. They are flexible and then they are reposition their 3D structure by physical way and then they make the repulsive force by the charge. So this paper, this one of the our collaborator, Porei Janmei, yeah, working in UPenn, he published this paper in Nanoletter, the unique role of the Vimentin. Okay? So the one thing you should understand is, okay, oh, affecting the microtubule, there they can show strain softening. But this intermediate filament, ventin, they are strain stiffening. Okay? So because of strain softening, you can see some affecting, sometimes they are breaking down. But mm, anyhow, so, so this is some strain uh, stiffening mechanism from the intermediate filament. Here, let's see. Mm. Polymer physics of cytoskeleton, also published by Genmei Group. Even though they are the, stiff, they are the stiffness of all known biopolymer with persistent length more than one millimeter, microtubule appear not to dominate the mechanics of cytoskeleton, perhaps because they are not stably close linked to each other or to other parts of cytoskeleton. But intermediate filament are the softest among those three major types of cytoskeletal filament. Their length of persistence is reported to range from 200 nanometer to slightly over one micrometer. And then they're depending on the type. Compared to the intermediate filament, microtubule and affecting a relatively brittle filament and rupture on the elongation or strain less than 10%. Intermediate filament, however, can bear much larger extension strain than microtuber and affecting. Several types of intermediate filament have been stretched up to 200 percentage. Okay, so from this sentence you can see that intermediate filament, softest one, okay, they are more flexible, but microtuber and filament, affecting, they are more brittle, they only endure 10% change. But intermediate filament, up to 200% change. Here, this is some, um, Vimentin uh, is intermediate filament, okay? It's affecting, and then microtubule. So the intermediate filament, Vimentin, another type, neural filament, they are charged mostly higher than others, okay? Mm. So, this is um, one of the way how the scientists understand the component of the each, each cell. Intermediate filament, microtubule, affecting. Even though this kind of three components, cell secret and cell using that one to maintain their structure, but in another point of view, you can imagine this is another type of the biopolymer. And then this biopolymer structure change, you can understand and expect how they, how cell behave. So that Janmei paper in Nanoletter, they, they want to know the role of the intermediate filament, Vimentin. And then they are making two different cells. One is Vimentin positive cell, normal. One is Vimentin knockdown cell, negative cell. And then they touch the cell by AFM. And then they check the stress, how their cell resist from external force. Depending on how they're compressed, strain, normal, they resist. But preventing negative, they are not resisting that much. Okay? Even they are using round AFMT, spread AFT similarly. Okay? So this is how they approach it. AFM, touch, release. Okay? So, 
So here, even though they touched the cell, the cell height, they didn't change that much. They just, because they want to use, they do not touch the cell nucleus. Sorry, they do not want to change that much of the cell. So they just touch softly on the top of the cell. But while they're touching, the cell height doesn't change that much. And then they check the nucleus. Unique role of the event in networks in compression stiffening of cell and protection of nuclei from compression stress. So they track the nucleus, hoaxed, the, as you know, blue, and lamin B, the nuclear membrane protein, and lamin AC, another nuclear membrane protein, and then check wild type and dementin null, knocked down. And then they're positioned like this. This is without stress, but they, they induce this cell, the centrifugal force, to remove the nucleus from the cell. So you can simply, and then they count the enucleated cell, which means enucleated absence of the nucleus instead of the cell. Originally, the cell maintained their structure and nucleus are there, but they remove the vimentin and then they check how much of force they needed to remove the nucleus. Here, using small centrifuges, this pimentin null, you can see more absence of the nucleus here. But here, high centrifugal force, most of the cell, they lose their nucleus. But normal cell, when they maintain the pimentin, they resist it. So they can confirm that the, the role of the pimentin is to protect the nucleus under this high compression, high external force system. And then they check while they're compressing the cell, they check how the how cell behave and nucleus behave. So when you see this, along with the increase of compression, vimentin negative cell compared to wild type, their nucleus very much change. Okay? And here, depending on the time or so, their nucleus is easily enlarged as 2D projection area. So he here, this kind of imaging, they analyze based on this. Same setting for dynamic compression silicon mold. Okay? While they're applying, applying pressure, they track the DAPI and analyze. And compared to uncompressed, com uncompressed may also uncompressed a little bit change, but comp uh, while they're compressed, this pimentin negative cell, they can see more cell area increase. Mm. So the lower of the pimentin is confirmed by compression system, and then the lower is to protect the nucleus shape or nucleus change. Because this pimentin, as I told you, they have what kind of characteristic? Strain stiffening, okay? other affecting microtubule or state strain softening, which means under this compression, they cannot have, have a significant load to protect the nucleus. Only pimentin, only intermediate filament, they are strain stiffening characteristic, so they can resist the external force. So this is some, one of the characteristics of the intermediate filament. So after this paper, this Jam, uh, Paul A. Jamme group published in Nature, Nature, yeah, Nature, two two years ago. So this actually this very um, interesting paper. They they don't have much of the cell data, but the concept is very important. Emergence of tissue-like mechanics from fibrous networks confined by close-packed cell. Yeah, published by 
Vivek Chenoy and Paul A. Jemmey, New Pen Group. So let's imagine x axis is you compressed, compressed it. Y axis, Y compressed, the stiffness change. When you compress the lung, stiffness increase. Liver increase. Liver also increase from the mouth. Bovine spinal cord increase. Mouse kidney increase. You can also simply imagine when you touch some tissue and touch it, they are increasing the compression. Uh, they are increasing stiffness, right? You can feel some hard hardness while you are compression. This okay, we can understand. But interesting point is that we want to mimic their tissue, okay, using collagen network and hearing exit. So adipose tissue also while you are while you are compression, they are increase of modulus. They are hard, they become hard. But we can exactly use same setting, same ECM component, collagen and hyaluronic acid, to mimic the adipose tissue. But this violet color, how, how happened? While we are compressed, they are decreasing the modulus, which means we cannot mimic the tissue using the ECM only. Okay? Oh, how did it happen? This is very interesting, right? We exactly use the same ECM component of adipose tissue. Adipose tissue exactly have 2.25 collagen and 4% hyaluronic acid. But even though we are using the same amount, same composition, but the behavior is totally changed. This is strain softening. But tissue always strain stiffening, right? Oh, very interesting. How this happened? Okay, and then they check the native blood clot as well. Native blood clot, interestingly, uh, they don't much of change here. But here also they check uh, native blood clot hole. They are also, while they are compressed, Also, strain stiffening. Okay, this value anyhow minus plus the direction, so we can call it strain stiffening. But when they treat blebistatin to decrease the motor acting and micro acting micro microtuber motor, treat it also similarly strain stiffening. When they use fibrin structure, also. Strain stiffening. Okay, so here the system they said so using only ECM, they cannot mimic the tissue structure. So next, what can be included? So they add particle. Okay, even fibrin. And then, let's say fibrin, but when they induce particle, inert particle, up to 50 or 60 percent, and then you can see the strain stiffening condition. Okay? And then, when they use another like adherent particle, also they increase, maybe PAA, gel, other, other particle increase, so the beauty of this paper is that to mimic the tissue mechanics, the particle should be considered. This is some their message. So this paper, when you're interested about this phenomenon, when you read this PNA paper, also published in Jamme Group, they said just you can understand this one. While they're relaxing, so when they stretch, they are showing like that. But while they are compression, this bead, inert bead, and then the ECM, like collagen and hyaluronic acid, they are intermingle each other like this. And then certain time, 
when they add more beat, they become the strain stiffening. Cause this hyaluronic structure also they have repulsive force. And then while they are inducing repulsive force, this kind of beat, some particle, they should be incorpor incorporated. So they also, using simulation system, they, they anticipate this phenomenon. OK. And then, so up to now, so it's a little bit heavy and then deep science about how we can rise the lower of the, our intermediate filament. And then when you mimic our ECM system, not only ECM, but also other kind of component should be incorporated. So can you imagine what is the particle in your system, in our body? So let's say this is tissue. Tissue have all kind of ECM, right? The what is the most hard, hardest, most, what is the hardest component in the tissue? And among the cell component, which is nucleus, right? Nucleus is, they didn't break that much. They are very hard. And you can imagine this nucleus is a hard component particle. So under behind this system is nucleus, they are dominant factor to make the cell, make the tissue hard while they're compressed. OK, and then next, nuclear deformation causes DNA damage by increasing replication stress. Here, uh, they are using microfluidic system and then track the cell, NLS and M-cherry. M-cherry is marker of DNA damage. And the NLS is nucleus membrane marker. So some cell, while they are confined by small area, OK? And then they can start to show, they can start to show DNA damage, OK? With rupture. With rupture means that when you see in detail, some this cell nucleus membrane, they are diffused here, right? They are diffused, which means the nucleus membrane is ruptured while they are passing through this small area. Okay? And then anyhow, rupture, because of rupture, DNA damage. But this cell, this is another, this normal cell, but this is some cancer cell, MDAMB. The cancer cell, they have originally they have very flexible nucleus membrane. So they doesn't feel rupture. There's no diffuse of the green one, right? Compared to this, this diffuse one. Without rupture, but still the increase of DNA damage. Okay? So, okay. Uh, DNA damage, they also increase. But important thing is that this normal cell, some cells are ruptured. But this cancer cell, they detect the DNA increase, damage increase, but rupturing doesn't occur that much compared to normal. Okay? So they propose this kind of concept. So here I want to say that this confinement migration is one of the another external force to induce the compression. Okay? So when you want to know what kind of things happen while they are passing through very small area, small pore. Also, you can imagine use, to use compression system. But this compression, depending on the nucleus membrane in integrity, their stiffness or their flexibility, they behave can change. Okay, so this is some one of the message I want to I want to deliver to you. Okay, and then 
here they directly use the same system which we are buying, PDMS compression, and then they track the DNA damage. Using the same dye, right? 53PP1M cherry, compared to 5 micrometer confinement, 2 micrometer confinement, you can see mm, DNA damage more occur while compression. Okay? So not only the small area migration, but also this physical compression, also they can induce the DNA damage. Okay, I just passing through this one. And then they use another, another light system. Here, they physically contact the 3D collagen which already incorporate the cell, fibroblast. And then they compress using this system, more physically, right? And then they can stain the tunnel, one of the DNA damage marker, and then they can show increase of apoptotic cell increase, tunnel positive staining, right? Then depending on the, this is same pressure, but increase of time, same hour, same time, increase of compression. Anyhow, depending on the hour or pressure force, they can see the apoptotic cell increase. So one thing you can imagine is that cells are compressed, either small area migration, physical compressed on 2D, and like this 3D embedded one, cell easily feel, not easily, cell feel DNA damage or apoptotic cell. But as a biological way, you can imagine how this change can be recovered again. Mm. Next, one of the another uh, secondary messenger, calcium can change, right? So under compression, how calcium can change? Here, they induce 20 to 60 Pascal of compression. And then using fluorophore dye, they track the calcium imaging, zero, normal basal level, and you, when you see, increase of compression, they are increased on calcium of intracellular level, okay? Using this dye, another dye, you can imagine they are all increasing. And then here, or maybe this, this is a lymphocyte as far as I know, oh, what is that? Uh, this is on a cancer cell. The cancer cell, untreated one, they are going increasing, but EGTA, is extracellular calcium inhibitor. When they inhibit, when they remove all extracellular calcium level, intracellular calcium level doesn't increase, which means calcium is recruited from the extracellular media. Okay? This is proved by EGTA, not from the intracellular level. And then, as you know, GSMTX is piezo inhibitor. Right? And gadolinium chloride, also pan mechanical sensitive ion channel inhibitor. So they prove ion, uh, mechanical sensitive ion channel inhibitor is involved, this increase of calcium level, and then especially piezo is involved. This is proved by this system. And then when you knock down the piezo, they are gone. Their increase is gone. So, how the compression increase the calcium, intracellular calcium level, from the extracellular calcium level, and then from the pH one or two, tier pH one. But depending on your cell type, you can change pH one and two. Okay. So this is the way how you prove this calcium is where are coming from. Okay, so here they prove the concept while they compress. Mm. Using this pH channel, calcium is uptake. And then calcium is uptake, SRC actin protrusion happen. Mm. So this gel gelatin degradation area, so normal gelatin is degraded. Okay, and the increase of compression force they are more degraded. Here, 
they gelatin agarose top and then in capsule cell between in the between and then compressed it and then when and then they track how this gelatin is degraded by the cell here the over increase of compression the gelatin is more degraded you can see this black is degraded gelatin so degraded of gelatin but when they treat pH one antagonist, pH one knockdown, they are all decreasing. Okay, so here the mechanism how the cell secret the MMP ECM degrading enzyme by the compression force by the pH one channel. They prove this this concept, and then this paper I will introduce later, next week or the day after next week. Anyhow, the concept is nucleus react against compression stress mediated by nucleus membrane unfolding and calcium release into cytoplasm. Simply, you can try to understand confinement using our same system from 10 to 5 micrometer, they simultaneously confine. 10 to 9, 9 to 8, 8 to 7, 7 to 6, 6 to 5. Okay? But up to 5, there, something changed. Okay? This is 6 confined, but 4 is maintained. But 5, 4 is more enhanced, which means somehow while they are compressed, this up to this point, something changed, something resists. Maybe nucleus, right? And then, First, this is, they call it first responder. First responder more detected around 100% from the 5 micrometer. Mm. So up to 5, maybe they maintain their structure, but over 5, confinement, cell, they really repulse the force. And then this is some their cell jet axis, 20, the original, uh, suspension state, 10 micrometer adherent, 5 micrometer. While there, while we are confined the cell by compression, myosin 2 signal. Myosin 2 is one of the motor to induce some external force, internal force. The myosin 2 level is enhanced. Up to 5 minutes, very quickly, they are making microtubule myosin 2 signal and then when you look at in detail of the nucleus affecting cytoplasm and blue is nuclear envelope originally when, it's, when you see the cell nucleus they are spherical but actually they are like this they are folded okay they are folded but this folding it is appearing while we are confined them so here, this paper, they mention, they want to mention that this unfolded lamin, folded nuclear membrane is a key factor to feel, to sense the nuclear compress. And then this folding is needed because to minimize the DNA damage. Without this fold, folding, while, while they are compressed, they are easily ruptured. Nucleus membrane, right? But this is some kind of buffer, buffer for the cell. They always have this kind of folding structure. While they're unfolding, they feel, oh, they quickly use this folded nuclear membrane to enlarge their nucleus area. But over time, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, cell cannot <coughs> resist anymore. And then they start to show apoptotic pathway. So as I, as I said before, when, while they compress, calcium was enhanced. Okay, calcium was enhanced. And then, so here, they propose like this. Nuclear membrane is stretched because this uh, folded one, they are stretched. Okay, while they stretch, 
this uh, nuclear membrane also have piezo receptor, piezo ion channel. So from this piezo ion channel, calcium is released to the cytoplasm, and then ectomyosin contractility in cytoplasm, they are enhanced. So they show this concept. But in detail, I will show you. So here's the last figure. So how this confinement changed the epigenetic change. Here, there, this little bit, how can I say, artificial way to combine the cell. They coated fibronectin as a rectangular way, and then see the cell, and then they're positioned rectangularly, and then over top of the cell, they position the weight, which means the cell area cannot change, right? Only z-axis height can change, no xy-axis change. In that case, they tracked the DNA, control and load. Either the bottom cell area is rectangular or circle, what happened? While they are compressed by z-axis, DNA is more condensed. You can see, right? More condensed. Control load, control load, condensed. And then, also, chromatin condensation in S, and then they remove the weight, they are going back, recovery, recovered. And then, what kind of epigenetic change? 27,9 methylation 3 is a heterochromatin marker. This heterochromatin marker, more position to the edge. Okay? We, as we saw last week, the peripheral K9 or K27 position it is, uh, it can be used for protecting to increase the nucleus, mem nucleus stiffness, right? So this is the one way. K927 appear strongly and then especially the peripheral area. And K9 methylation 3, yeah, compared to this, is also enhanced. But this is not from the periphery here, this cell. They are foci. On the foci, they are more strongly expressed. Okay? So maybe some cell, K9 is major, like the epithelial cell, but this is the fibroblast. So the load of the K9 and K27, they can change depending on cell type. Here, 27 is more involved in peripheral area, but K9 is more foci, but they are enhanced. But when you check the K9 acetylation, euchromatin marker, open chromatin, what happened? Here, K9 isolation, foci, they're more gone, right? So, which means euchromatin decreasing. Heterochromatin marker increasing. K9 methylation, especially there from the foci, K27 from the periphery area. Hmm. This is, after loading, this happened. So, they propose like this. This is without compression, after compression. They, regardless of the rectangular shape or round shape, this is more transcriptory active, without compression. But after compression, transcriptory less active because heterochromatic structure enhanced, euchromatin is going down as a crystal state. But all thing you should remember is that this is artificial confined cell adhesive area, right? When you imagine, without this fibronectin confinement, when you freely see the cell and the compress, everything can change totally, okay? So we cannot know. Only compression, they are really induced heterochromatin status. This is true. We cannot say like that under this system, without change of x and y axis, while you are compressed the z axis only, cell more inactive. But when you see the cell, just culture dish, and then compress the cell, we didn't know. Because sometimes, chondrocyte, osteoblast, fibroblast, while they're compressed, we can easily feel that they, are, they can be more active, right? Sometimes. So this is depending on your experimental condition. But this system, 27, K9, and K9 isolation, 
how they are changed, you always remember this kind of system you have to see how, when you want to say how epigenetic curve changes. And then they are three hour seeding and then one hour loading to grab. Okay, very early time. Because, so, as you know, early time is they remove all kind of cell cycle things, so other things, and they usually see the morphology change. So this is the reason why they use this system. Okay, any question? Okay, thank you.